Hey everybody. Today we're doing a few problems with the normal distribution, some computations that are intended to help us build our understanding. In both of the two problems I'm going to do today, I'm going to be looking at this situation. We have a newly mowed yard, and the blades of grass there have lengths that are normally distributed with mean 3 inches and standard deviation 4 tenths of an inch. I'm in the United States, and inch is about 2.5 centimeters for those of you that are located elsewhere. First, I want to sketch this distribution. I want to label at least five points on the axis. And then I'm going to do a few problems here using the empirical rule. After that, for problem two, I'll get into some actual computations. I'll get into R and use p-norm. OK, so the normal distribution is going to be symmetric. The mean is going to go right in the middle. And that standard deviation is going to give us a measure of spread. That's going to be the distance from the center of the distribution to the inflection point on the graph. So first of all, remember your notation for the normal distribution, n parenthesis, mean, and variance. And here I've written the variance as 0.4 squared, the square of the standard deviation. Here's the picture. As I said a second ago, we put the mean right in the middle. And then the standard deviation take, tells us the distance that we need to go to the left or right to get to the inflection point on the graph of the normal curve. That is where the graph changes from looking like the top of a hill to the bottom of a valley. I've labeled both the mean and one standard deviation in each direction. I've also labeled another standard deviation in each direction. So 2.2, 2.6, 3.0, 3.4, and 3.8. The next parts of this problem, B, C, and D, are all using the empirical rule. The empirical rule says, first of all, that about 68% of the probability under a normal curve lies within one standard deviation of the mean. So about 68% of blades of grass have lengths between about 2.6 and 3.4 inches. Similarly, according to the empirical rule, about 95% of all probability lies within two standard deviations of the mean. So about 95% of blades of grass have lengths between 2.2 and 3.8 inches. If I go one more standard deviation in each direction, I get 99.7% of the probability so 99.7% of all blades of grass have lengths between 1.8 and 4.2 inches. Again, just going one more standard deviation in each direction. Problem two. Still looking at these blades of grass, they have the same normal distribution. Now I'm taking a blade of grass at random, and I ca I'm calling its length x. I want to compute the following probabilities. First of all, that x is less than 3.5. So 3.5 is a slightly longer than average length of, um, for a blade of grass here. I want to know the probability of getting something shorter than that. So I'm expecting something upwards of 50%. So we're going to be doing this using the p-norm command. That's the CDF for the normal distribution. It gives us a, exactly this probability. The probability that x is less than 3.5 in the normal distribution with mean 3 and standard deviation of 0.4. Notice that p-norm, this is an R command by the way, wants a standard deviation, not a variance. And so this is a place where my notation that I wrote here, n of 3.0 comma 0.4 squared, is convenient. Here's the picture that goes with it. I have sketched that same normal distribution with mean 3 and standard deviation 0.4 that we saw um, in problem 1. I've labeled the value of interest here, 3.5, and then shaded in the area to the left. When we're talking about continuous random variables, we interpret probabilities to be areas under the graph for the region of interest, in this case to the left of 3.5. We have about 89.4% of this area is shaded, so the probability of getting a random blade of grass whose length is less than 3.5 inches is about 89.4%. I think I'll swap over to R and actually code that in really quickly. I also want to do this problem a second way using a z-score. OK, so just to reiterate what I just did, I'm going to do p-norm of 3.5 <laughs> sorry, in the normal distribution with mean 3 and standard deviation 0.4. And there's that 89.4 that we saw on the slide. The second way I want to do it is with a z-score. So I'm going to take this value that I have, 3.5, and convert it to a z-score. And the way you do that is you take the value, 3.5, and you subtract off the mean, 3, 
and you divide it by the standard deviation, 0.4. So in this case, the z-score is 1.25. And the way that, the, um, that normal probabilities work is that this p-norm in this distribution, this normal distribution with mean 3 and standard deviation 4, is going to be exactly the same as the p-norm of the corresponding z-score in a standard normal distribution. That is, with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. You get the same value. Now, the way p-norm works in R is that that mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1 are default values, so we could just leave those out, and we still get the 89.4%. So that's just an equivalent way of doing this same problem. All right, let's do parts B, C, and D just directly. We won't sw swipe back to R, but I want to make sure we get the calculations with the code and the pictures. The probability that X is greater than 2.5 in this same distribution. So now we're going to want area to the right of this graph. And we're going to get that, I'm sorry, to the right of this value, X equals 2.5. The way we're going to get that is by taking the area to the left and subtracting it from 1, the total area under the graph. And that's represented by 1 minus p norm of 2.5,3,0.4. Here's the picture that goes with it. You can see I've labeled 2.5 on my graph, shaded the area to the right, and then computed that area. The p norm of 2.5,3,0.4 would be this unshaded area here in white. The total area under the entire graph is 1, so 1 minus that p-norm gives me the shaded area, 0.894. If you look at the graphs from, point a, or from problem part A and B, you can see that those shaded areas are actually identical. It's not a coincidence that these two problems both came out to give me areas of 0.894. Let's do a couple more that are slightly different. The probability that x is between 3.1 and 3.8 in this same normal distribution. So I want to do this by taking the area to the left of 3.8 and then subtracting out the area to the left of 3.1. Again, in the same normal distribution with mean 3 and standard deviation 0.4. Here's the picture that goes with that. Um, the p norm of 3.1 comma 3, comma 0.4 is this unshaded area to the left of 3.1. And p norm of 3.8, comma 3, comma 0.4 will be all of the area to the left of 3.8. So both this shaded area and the non-shaded area just to the left. So when I take this shaded area and that non-shaded area, the 3.8, and subtract out the non-shaded area over here, that's the p norm of the 3.1, I'm left with just this shaded area. So it's 0.379 overall. Another way to interpret this, by the way, is that this area here that's shaded represents 37.9% of the area under that graph. Last part, the probability that x is between 3.8 and 4.1. I'm going to do this exactly the same way as part c. I'm going to take p norm of 4.1, comma 3, comma 0.4, and subtract off p norm of 3.8 comma 3, comma 0.4. So I'm taking the area to the left of 4.1 and then subtracting out the area to the left of 3.8. So with this picture I have here, you have to look kind of closely, but you can see that at 4.1 I have a line here. That's where my shaded area ends. So I'm doing the area to the left of that, subtracting out the area to the left of 3.8 under this same curve. And in this case, I get um, 0.02. I have a typo right here. I will fix that before I post my slides to GitHub. It should be 0.020, about 2% under the of the area under that graph, not 